Okay, so uh, a couple of people have asked me about um, fitting the um, uh, the uh, LED headlights onto a um, uh, Thunderbird uh, 1600 um, and replacing the, the stock stock headlights. So uh, very, very simple to do. It takes literally five minutes to do. Um, for those of you who are a little bit unsure about it, I'll show you exactly what I did. Um, to remove the actual uh, the headlight itself, you've got two um, Phillips screws uh, either side here. Um, so once you unscrew those, the front section with a little rattle, okay, will actually just come straight off. And you've got a whole load of cables inside here, um, a lot of which I don't really understand what they do. Um, but it's very, very simple to remove the headlight. Um, so I'll take these off here, uh, and you can see very, very simply, there's three connectors, okay. We've got these two here, single ones, and then we've got the standard three pin connector that you find on most, uh, most headlights. And that's the headlight unit itself. What you've got inside here now are you have these, um, these clips that you see there. These are very, very simple to remove. All you do is just simply push down on one side, okay? He says confidently, push down, and the other side comes loose, and then the clip just comes out. And that's what the clip looks like, okay? You don't need to worry about the orientation about holding it somewhere because they're fairly easy to put back in. So there's four of those. So you just remove these clips. And that's your clips coming out. So your, your headlight unit will then simply lift out, okay? So that's the actual headlight and there's your surround. So the one I'm replacing it with, um, it's come recommended by a few people, is this one. Um, this is the, the Wizamic um, five and three quarter inch halo LED um, project headlight. Um, this one has actually got the uh, the halo band on it as well. Um, now you get your high beam and your low beam in there. Um, so the unit itself, take it out. Okay, so that's the unit. Um, you've got the main lights there, and these are the uh, the high beam lights. And this halo light you can have um, set to stay on all the time, which is great. In the back, um, what you've got here is you've got the standard three, the standard three pin, and you've got these two cables here which are joined together. If you can see them there, so these two are joined together. There's a little tag on here which tells you to keep them keep them joined. If you if you keep them joined, what that means is that as soon as you turn your ignition on, the halo will come on automatically. If you disconnect these, the halo will not come on. So it's up to you, it's your choice what you choose to do with it, okay? So to put this in, there's some really important things to bear in mind here. Inside, okay, you see it, you've got this tab, okay? This tab here. Now, you're gonna need to do a little bit of um, uh, adapting here, okay? This tab needs to be bent up a little bit to accept the new headlight. Okay, so what I'd recommend is to take a little bit of time to do this because you may wanna change it back if you don't like it to get a good pair of pliers and to actually, to make sure you just bend it nicely up, not by this end piece, because it may snap, but by the whole unit, the whole thing, okay, to try and bend it up. Um, it doesn't need to go up too much, probably about 10 mil to accept the new light. I haven't got a pair of pliers, hang on. Okay, so we need to make sure you bend the whole thing up and not just the end piece because that will weaken it. And try and keep it as straight as you possibly can. Okay, it only really needs to go up. It's difficult to see from that angle. I suppose there, about that much. Okay, to enable you to actually to fit the light unit in. Okay, now this tab here, that tab is actually the top. Okay, and on the light unit, the new light unit here, you've got text on the very, very top here. Okay, you've got text on the top in the glass. So that's the top part, which should tie up with your tab. So we go from the inside out, okay, and just rotate it. So the orientation is just about right. Okay, you can adjust it a little bit more if you want. So on the inside, it's all sat in like that. Okay, 
On the inside of the new light unit, there is a small square tab at the top there. But if you can see, if I take it out, you can probably see it. Okay, you've got a small square tab just there. Okay, that is the top. So if you line that up from the inside with the tab itself, okay, then you're pretty much orientated just about right. All you then need to do, okay, is refit these. So what I also worked out with these tabs, okay, is that if you choose to remove this light unit and put the original one back in, then these tabs will be a little bit loose. Okay, the way to get them to fit back, okay, is all you need to do is to squeeze them back in a little bit, okay, and then they should fit the original light fitting again. Okay, so now we've got all of those fits, those, um, uh, those clips back in, as you can see, it's really quite sturdy and it's quite secure in there. I've seen some videos of people finding these very loose and they're fitting weather sheet or weather seal around here. It's not really necessary if you actually fit the clips in properly because it will push in quite tight, okay? And it's nice and secure and won't rattle, okay? Now, the simple thing with this is, all you need to do is to plug this back in. That's it there. Remember to keep these two together. You don't need to separate them if you want this halo to work, okay? Put your light, light unit back in. Rotate it to the right position because your screw fitting should actually sit in nicely, okay? And then put your screws back in and your light's ready. As you can see there, I know it's a bit of flicker in there, but um, had to, to adjust it so you can actually see the lights. So that's the ones that come on with the halo. When we go high beam, it's those two at the bottom that come on. Okay, so I've got my spotlights on there. Um, so that's the two there, high beam down the bottom, low beam up top, high beam bottom, low beam top. So they are very, very effective during the day, certainly. Um, however, my experience has actually shown that uh, during night time, they do create um, a bit of a dead spot uh, as, far as, uh, um, as far as casting the light forward is concerned. It, it may take some adjusting. What I found actually is when I have my spotlights on um, here, um, it fills in that dead spot. Um, but without them, um, I certainly consider that uh, Certainly with this particular light unit, um, it's, um, it makes driving at night uh, quite hazardous, strangely enough. Okay, thanks for watching.